Hi, and welcome to this edition of Inside Leesburg, your connection to our beautiful lakefront city. Today, we have a very special guest with us. We are honored to have the newly named mayor of the city of Leesburg, Dan Roebuck. Mr. Mayor, so happy to have you here with us today. Um, has it sunken yet? Yeah, I'm excited to be here. I uh, <laughs> had my, my first official duties as mayor this morning, got to read a proclamation for uh, Martin Luther King Day and, and all the uh, festivities we'll be having over the next two weeks uh, here in Leesburg and around the county. Well, the, the thing is, is you've been part of the commission since 2014. Correct. And, you know, I guess many folks out there might know your name, Roebuck, from the Romack Lumber Company, but has it always been a passion for you to be in politics? No, uh, certainly, certainly not. I mean, I was interested in it, you know, when I was much younger, and then uh, uh, after getting involved in the business, I thought I would never get into politics. And uh, so, were you class president? Were you involved in with school? Sixth grade. Oh wow! Yeah, sixth grade. So. Um, and you went to Leesburg, correct? You grew yeah, up in this area. I did. I did. I went to, to, to Treadway Oak Park and Leesburg High School. Wow. Well, so it, the fact of the matter is, is I mean, you grew up here. Did you go to college locally, or did you you, you stay in the state? Correct? I stayed in the state. I went to I went to Florida State. Awesome. Okay, we'll forgive you. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> yeah. No, but the fact of the matter is, is in the sense of, did you always know you're going to come home? Yes, absolutely. I mean, coming back to the family business is, is what I always wa wanted to do. So, um, You know, I, the, I think the story about Romac Lumber, it, it started in 1945, correct? Correct. Do you want to kind of give the story behind it in a sense of the two people, the entity, what Romac stands for? Yeah, so Romac is uh, Romac and McDonald, or uh, Roebuck, sorry, Romac and McDonald, Roebuck and McDonald. Um, there was another family, um, McDonald family, but they uh, they left the business a couple years after it was founded to do something else, but we kept the name, and so it's been that, that way ever since. My grandfather's the one that started it. How many years have has the Romac family lived in the Leesburg area? So my grandfather moved here in 1945, I believe it was, or when it was started here. Were they Floridians, or did they come from yeah. out of state? He, uh, he, uh, he, my grandfather was born in Jacksonville. Oh wow! Any idea what brought them to Leesburg? Was that a curiosity? Uh, so uh, yeah, um, af after the war, um, lumber was rationed, uh, along with many other products, mm. and my my uh, grandfather's uh, brother-in-law had a connection. He worked for a big forest company, and he said, "Hey, uh, you know, if you start a lumberyard, I can get you allocation for lumber." And uh, so, so they started up. They actually originally had like seven branches throughout the state: Tallahassee, Green wow. Cove Springs, Leesburg, I think down somewhere down in Tampa. Um, and then they can kind of consolidate it over the years. Well, I'm proud to say that actually, the um, I I bought an old horse farm here locally in Lake yeah. County, and uh, when we renovated it, we we greenovated it. So I wanted to put a metal a solar roof on my barn, and I'll never forget the engineers came out because I thought that the truss system looked pretty good, and they're like, we hate to tell you this, but that you know truss system has like maybe five years left in it. So again, when you do a project like that, you find a lot of things that you didn't realize you'd have to do. So our truss system is actually from Romac. Well, we appreciate that. <laughs> yeah, I'll never forget them bringing them in. It was, quite, it was quite a venture. And I think a lot of folks in our community would want to say thank you to Romac Lumber because after Hurricane Irma, you guys were like one of the few companies locally that still had a lot of supplies, right? Yeah, I, I believe so. I, I know we had people coming as far as or Orlando over there, but uh, you know, that's just, just kind of part, of part of our job and you know, making sure that, that we have the the supplies that the community needs so when we have a storm. So. In the sense of um, Hurricane Irma, in the sense of your company, I mean, it's been a while since we've had a hurricane in this area. I mean, how are you guys so prepared, or is that just something that you guys normally just have a lot of those supplies on, on hand? Yeah, so actually, what people don't see is we stock up like that before any time there's a hurricane coming anywhere close to Florida. They haven't happened to hit before, but uh, it, it's something that that we do to make sure that that we are prepared, and because if you, if you wait till two days before, you're not going to be able to get get the supplies from from our vendors. So. Well, I think the city of Leesburg, on another note too, in the sense of you know your family business, in the sense of having the supplies to help our community, but also you know some folks in this area. I mean, it was days, weeks until they got their electric back on. Yeah, uh, we responded pretty well, city of Leesburg. Uh, I mean, fantastic, uh, and and that's an advantage to having a municipal power is that when there is a storm, our linemen are here working on our system in Leesburg. The investor-owned utilities, they've got to send their people all over the state of Florida, and they, rightly so, they 
they, they focus on getting the most people up as quick as possible. Well, if you live in a town like Leesburg or, or as people in, in other areas of Lake County found with the big ones, you're not a population center. So you're last on the list. But if you live on Leesburg Power, that's not the case because we're going to have our people working here, our linemen, our public works people. I mean, it, th their response, you know, they were working 24-hour shifts. They were sleeping at the, at, at the office mm -hmm. to get everyone back on. Um, we had everyone. We had over ninety percent of the people up in three days. Yeah, I know um, the, the numbers were, were, were pretty spectacular. And uh, people, you know, were, were very grateful. And and uh, and then and when Public Works, you know, always, you know, people, there's always been a little bit of confusion. Do I live in Leesburg or do I live in the county? Because you could have a Leesburg address right. and you live in the county. Well, now after the storm, it was really easy to figure out because two weeks later, if there was trash outside, you lived in the county. If your trash was gone, you lived in the city of Leesburg. <laughs> I love it. You know, the fact of the matter is, is, like right before Irma, I saw something somewhere on the internet that Leesburg, Leesburg, Florida, is actually probably one of the most safest cities in the state to live yeah. in a sense of hurricanes. Right, right in the middle of the state. So another reason to come live, come move and, and live here in Leesburg. Great taxes, great electric bills, yeah. and, and it's safe. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> Very good. I just wanted to put that in yeah. there because, I mean, I think it's great that you guys, uh, in a sense, well, you know, in a sense of uh, the family business and being such a, an important part of this community, when you came back home, what was it about, I guess, the local politics or what was going on that made you say, you know what, I want to get involved with the city commission? Yeah, so um, I came back here full time after grad school in 2012. Um, and at the time, Leesburg was, was having some problems, uh, f some financial difficulties, and, and they were talking about uh, needing to raise taxes and electric rates both pretty substantially. and. Okay. I thought that you know that that, that affects my business. Um, we were having uh, Leesburg was certainly on a downswing. We were having trouble attracting talent because people didn't want to live here, um, and so I, I started uh, going to the city commission meetings. I started um, reading the budget, going through the financial documents, and at, at the time, um, uh, and we have much different commission. We had a different city manager, a lot of different people, and I said, you know, I, I think they're missing the perspective of, of a business owner with a kind of a finance background, and that would, would be a good thing. So I decided to Because that's what your run. degree is in, right? Right, finance. in finance. So uh, I decided to run. Um, and uh, in the meantime, they, they hired uh, Al, the current city manager, and um, we had some other changes on the commission. And uh, you know, today, we're, we're in a much better place. So. And it's a, it's a strong team, isn't it? I mean, this, it, I, mean I, 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 I came on board with Lakefront TV just shortly before you became a commissioner, and to see the transition and just the whole sort of energy in the sense of the revival of Leesburg, it's, it's a really strong team. It is. It is. Um, I think, you know, the commission, you know, while we certainly disagree, we all work well together. We get along, you know, when, when we disagree, we don't <laughs> call, call each other names, yell at each other. Uh, and, and I can say from through my business, I do have to occasionally go to other cities and counties. That's not always the case. Right. Um, so uh, we do. And then, then uh, the city staff, I mean, they're, they're just phenomenal from the department heads on down. Uh, we've got a, a really great team. So... Could you explain to the viewers, because in a sense of, because um, in the sense of being named mayor, how does it work yeah. with our commission? Certainly. So uh, we we rotate the the mayor position every year. Okay. Um, the rest of the commissioners elect one in Leesburg. We just kind of each take a turn. Um, so uh, it, it's really a ceremonial role. We get to run the meeting, mm -hmm. and we get to go to, we go to events to kind of represent the city as a, a public face. But we don't have any special powers, right. um, j just like a regular commissioner. I'm, I'm one out of five votes. So going from that chair as commissioner, because we actually were there Monday night and we mm -hmm. filmed it. So the fact of the matter of you uh, positioning over to that mayor's seat, I mean, what more? What, what, what new roles? What new? You know, in the sense of your position now, in the sense of do you need to play? Over the next year, yeah. So I get to run the meeting, so, um, so it's going to be a lot, sh probably, probably shorter. I'm, I'm uh, pretty <laughs> brief, pretty to the point. Uh, so uh, but we'll, 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 we'll leave it at that. To, to Some talk. of the mayors in the yeah. past have been chatterboxes. Yeah. We'll leave it at uh, but, no. uh, <laughs> uh, that. But that's really it. I mean, there's no, no nothing special. Um, but you, you get know. to go out and do some cool things. Yeah, like. I get to go, yeah, I get to go to, to, to ribbon cuttings. Uh, I got to read a proclamation this morning. You um, get to turn those Christmas lights on down at Light Up uh, Venetian yeah, Garden, which is yeah, cool. Yeah, right, right. I get to be a, a, a judge in some of the parades. Uh, so. <laughs> well, and of course, you know, and it, 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 you know, Lakefront TV being part of the city of Leesburg, 
I'm very happy to hear that you want to do sort of like a monthly mayor update, which is wonderful because when uh, Commissioner Hurley was mayor, he really liked to do the hometown heroes uh, sort of uh, feature monthly. Uh, mayor Bone would come in on occasion to do some stuff. So I'm really glad that, because some folks in the community, because the commission meetings are open to the public, I'm not right. sure folks may or may not know that, but the fact of the matter is, is maybe some folks like to see what's going on or hear what's going on. And Absolutely. And I think that that's a, a, a big part of our role, both as commissioners and, and now as the mayor, is to really just inform the public of what we're doing. Because the meetings, uh, you know, a lot of people can't come to the meetings because they're working. Uh, they've got kids that, you know, that have exactly. come home from school. Uh, and, and frankly, the meetings aren't terribly exciting, so I don't know why you'd want to sit through them for three hours uh, uh, twice a month. But, um, you know, and of course, you know, provide a great service here with the TV station. They can watch it. But also right. as commissioners, it's important for us to just go out and let, let people know what's going on. So, you know, when they see construction on the road like, right. like we're having here on Dixie, they know, you know, what's coming and who's paying right. for it and all those things that people... Well, you know, you were on the radio this morning on Q1410, and I heard you mention about the Dixie Project in a sense of not only is it a, a wonderful beautification, but it's also a safety issue in the mm -hmm. sense of getting rid of that sort of that suicide lane, they call it. But the fact of the matter is, is folks might be saying, oh, all this construction, you know, who's paying for this? It's not the city of Leesburg, is it? No, it's not. The, the state's actually paying for that, that project. They were going to awesome. come in and, and repave the road anyway, so we said, hey, how about we do some beautification at it? And, and they agreed, so... I know, it's, it's wonderful. It's a good deal. And a lot of good things happening this year in the sense of, you know, I was really surprised in the sense of I received the, the latest edition of our newsletter uh, and the fact of how quickly the Resource Center is opening. That's yeah. like next month. I know. Honestly, I was surprised too when I read that same letter. <laughs> like, really? Are we sure it's February wow. 8th, 2018 or 19? <laughs> no, it's, uh, it's you insane. Know, that, that is, that is. And, uh, you know, I'd like to take credit for that, but that's not me. That's, that, that's <laughs> See, the staff. he's mayor. That, that's, it's uh, opening. You know, that's staff doing a great job. Um, I mean, they've, they've been all over that uh, between Al and, and Ken Thomas and then and then probably Commissioner Christian. That he's right. really, really pushed hard for that project. So. Where exactly is that going to be located so uh, folks know? So, so folks know, yeah, it's um, it's out where um, what was called the, um, uh, oh, what's that, the name of that? Uh, uh, the, the, on Christian Court, there used to be apartments out there that the city bought. And, right. And, uh, and and tore down, and so and now we have this. It's this gonna be a great sort of. Um, how would you sum it up? Sort of a great sort of uh, for families and educational, a platform for people to get skills. Yeah, you know, I, I found out um, you from know, computers really a year kitchen. or two ago there was nowhere in <laughs> Leesburg to get a GED, and you wow. know that, that, that's a problem. And so um, you know that's gonna be out there, and we've partnered with um, a, a, a group called uh, Kids Central that provides services throughout the state similar to this. So we're gonna let them have some space, and they've got the expertise and the staff, wow. and so you can go in there and you can get your GED. We're partnering with. With, um, with Lake Tech, and um, oh, wow. not in February, the, the kitchen won't be done. But once the kitchen's open, you'll be able to go out there and you'll be able to take classes and learn to be, you know, learn, learn to be a line cook, and then you know maybe wow. a chef. And um, uh, we'll have people out there to, to help with different types of uh, you know services that they need provided, That's whether it's wonderful. for families, for seniors, it, it really to. The idea is, and 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 um, this is something I think really ties back to um, you know as we're celebrating Martin Luther King Day and all the events here is is kind of equality of opportunity. Mm. Um, not everyone has the same opportunities that, that I had and probably you had, um, right. you know. And if, if we're gonna expect them to have the outcomes we want, you know, we want everyone to have a good job, have a right. stable family, we gotta provide those opportunities. Right. And, and, and that can be, um, you know, for instance, getting the GED, learning a skill. Exactly. Um, you know, making sure that they can get health care, things like that. Um, and I think, um, I'm not sure, I mean, of course people could just go to LeesburgFlorida.gov um, and or call the, the main office, but I know the Resource Center actually might have some opportunities for people that might want to come and offer their services or do some hands-on to the public. Ken Johnson, I believe, is the person that's spearheading that? Uh, Ken Thomas. Thomas. Yes. Ken Thomas. yes. So a lot of good things coming there. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, you know, um, another building that's coming, which I know we're all very excited about because it's sort of like the phase three of the Venetian Gardens is going to be our new community center. Yeah. Kind of breaks my heart because I know that's where we do a lot of the chamber breakfast meetings yeah. and the events there, but it's gonna be pretty special, this new building, isn't it? It is, it is. It's gonna be, be very special. I mean, 
full disclosure, I wanted to renovate the current one and save some money, but yeah. I didn't win that uh, argument. But the new one, it's going to it's gonna be great. I mean, it's really going to be a, a top-notch facility. Is it going to go closer to the water, isn't it? It, it is. It's going to look out over um, uh, over the islands. Oh, wow. So and you'll have a bridge straight from it over the islands with a kind of a terrace area um, out in front. Um, and the reason it's not going to face directly into the basin is because we are going to be putting in some some uh, some pad sites, and we're working with a couple developers that are interested, and they're gonna would come in and put in restaurants there. So we'll have you'll be able to actually come down wow. and go to a restaurant on the water. We're gonna have public docks, so you can come to the lakefront city by boat now, which will be great. Imagine that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, uh, a few years ago we did a um, kind of uh, these charrettes where we brought the whole community in three different weekends um, and these discussion things. And the number one thing that people said they wanted in Venetian Gardens was a restaurant. So wow. Um, is excited about the community center. I'm even more excited about. I think it's gonna be awesome. What a great and location and backdrop for families mm -hmm. for people to go down there and to really enjoy the area. So I think restaurants are is I mean, obviously very exciting. The whole community. Right. Um, you grew up in this area. I didn't have that fortune. Do you remember as a child Venetian Gardens, what it was and what it is now, and to see that sort of that resurgence of it? Yeah, I do. I mean, I remember to an extent. Um, we used to go out to where the current ski beach is up till probably maybe when I was about 13, 14 years old, we would go out and, and go boating off the point there. Um, mm -hmm. And then that kind of got all overgrown and stopped. And now that is open again. Uh, you know, some people right. don't know that. We, we got permission from DEP. We've cleared the weeds out. We're able to put in some sand. And we have an area now you can come to the point. And ski beach is getting beautified also. Right. Yes. Uh, that's going on right now. So there'll be um, uh, going to be, instead of just an overgrown field of weeds, it'll, it'll still be a passive recreation area, but it'll be maintained. Right. Um, nice grass. We're going to have a, a walking trail, uh, a restroom there. Um, and we have that whole splash pad. We have the whole kids' corner area. I mean, it really surprises me when folks say Venetian Gardens and they find out what's down there. Yeah. I mean, people outside the Leesburg area, it truly is the gem of Leesburg. Yeah, absolutely. And, and that's important. You know, if we're going to attract families to come back to Leesburg, because we've lost a lot of families in Leesburg, and, and we attract businesses to locate here, they need those those type of amenities. And so we've got some more projects. And, and I think, you know, and it's kind of a, a two-phase thing. We, we pair the amenity side um, with things like Venetian Gardens. And then we pair the resource side with things like the, the resource center, and we're discussing a teen center to ensure that not only are we, we trying to attract new people, but we're also trying to provide opportunity for the, the people that are already here that you know, maybe need a little bit of help. Right. You know, and, and, and getting back to Lake Harris area in the sense of um, our international airport, Yes. I think it's really exciting in the sense of what we're going to be doing to allow seaplanes yeah, the better seaplane access, ramp, yeah. right? Yeah, it's going to be um, the seaplane ramps under, under construction right now. It'll be finished soon, and uh, we already have Whip Air, which um, is a fantastic company uh, who, who located here because we were going to put in a seaplane ramp. Right. And uh, seaplanes come from all over the United States and occasionally the world, and come C here to Whip Air. Seaplane capital of the world is right into Varys. Which... I know, and they they can, but they do all the work here in Leesburg. And then they fly <laughs> over to Varys and they have a hamburger, and that's great. <laughs> but the jobs and the work actually happens here in Leesburg. People just don't see it. Um, uh, last time I was at uh, over at Whip Air, they were actually outfitting some uh, some sort of uh, helicopters with some sort of I think it was a fueling system that was being sent over to the Middle East. Wow. Uh, you know, right here in Leesburg. Right here in our backyard. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of people don't know that. So it's so exciting, and I think we'll we'll continue to attract more businesses because there are very few airports that have seaplane ramps. So what's your vision in a sense of, um, I know you have some special in the sense of spearheading the meetings and of course some community public things that you have to do, but do you have any in the back of your mind now that you are in that role in the sense of any sort of passion or goals that you like to achieve over the next year? Yeah, I mean, so my, my number one uh, kind of kind of thing is, uh, is economic development. Um, you know, I, I want to continue to have policies and to do projects that are going to create jobs here in Leesburg and that are going to attract people to live in Leesburg to work at those jobs. And you know, those two things go go hand in hand. I think that's very important. I mean, I think short term, the number one thing we can do is close our sale with the villages. Mm. That's going to provide $8 million up front to the city of Leesburg that allows us to do some of these projects. And then once it's built out, it provides 4 to $6 million a year in annual money back to the city through property taxes. And most of it will be able to be spent here on projects because 
they provide their own amenities. So right. we don't provide fire, we don't provide recreation. They do that, we'll provide a little bit of police service, but mostly it, it, it'll be money we can reinvest in the areas uh, that need it. Um, it also changes our, our demographics numbers. People always say, I want a Starbucks in Leesburger. Why can't you get a Chick-fil-A here? Right. And the fact of the matter is those, those companies, they run a demographic screen. They, they, they don't look at anything else um, to start with. And if you don't meet those criteria, you're, you're immediately off the table. And once that's in, we'll start attracting interest from those and then, then get past the screen. And then we can sell them all, all the other great aspects of, of Leesburg. And, and so it'll help get some of the, uh, the businesses here that the people ask for. Um, and uh, so that would be kind of the, the short term thing. And then just continuing to, uh, to be business friendly, you know, low taxes, uh, you know, uh, we, which we have. We have some of the lowest taxes in, in Lake County for a city. Uh, I think you talk to, to developers, to business people, you know, they're very happy with the staff. And that, that's all staff. You know, when they come in and work with staff, they're easy right. to work with, they, they're, they're realistic. They, they help people through the process. So. You know, getting back to the whole situation, you know, a lot of people, because in a sense of sitting in and listening to some of the, the commission meetings, I know there were some folks that were kind of concerned saying, well, I moved to Leesburg because I didn't want to live in the villages. But you just hit on some of the key things in the sense of the good things of what the village is getting close and that bridging that gap is going to bring to our area. And matter of fact, um, I know the folks, the new owners of Lake Square Mall are very excited because that's another situation. If we're going to get the Chick-fil-A's, we're going to get all these other restaurants, that's also going to mean, mean some probably more anchor, better stores coming to the mall, too. Absolutely. It's going to help all businesses. And, and the fact of the matter is the 470 property, which they're purchasing, it's about the same distance from Le downtown Leesburg as Brownwood already is. So, right. you know, and I don't know anyone that lives in Leesburg that feels no. like today they live in the villages. No, it's just, you know, the, the, but, but you talk to downtown merchants. The people from the villages are here all the time in exactly. our downtown Leesburg and supporting our businesses and allowing so us to do benefit? stuff. So why not benefit? Why not benefit? Yeah, as a city? so you get the best of both worlds. Exactly. You know, you know, you're, 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 you're no golf cart craziness. <laughs> right. But, uh... <laughs> but no, but talking about the mall, you know, right before we started uh, filming, we we're just chit chatting in the sense of, I am so excited by these new owners and their vision. I mean, to find out that that ad adrenaline rush, which by the way, if you haven't done it yet, it's awesome that the folks from Italy came in to design that track, that indoor karting track. Yeah. Have yeah, you done we it were, yet? We, we, I haven't. I haven't. <laughs> I took a tour of it right before it opened, but they weren't, weren't, weren't operational yet. So. I'm, a, I'm at a 20 so second lap. I'm at a 20 All second right. lap. Now I know Commissioner Hurley was bragging that he, I think he said an eight second lap. I think he meant 18 seconds. Well. I, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I, I don't. I, I don't know that I want to try to compete with Commissioner Hurley on that. We'll, we'll just leave, leave it there. He probably does have the track record, but uh, but uh, I want to walk away. In anyway, so. But no, adrenaline rush. They have the new indoor laser tag coming, but also they do have five I main real stores coming. Yeah, yeah. They're spending a lot. They're going to spend three to five million dollars this year alone in improvements to that mall. I mean, that, that's huge. Uh, for them, and, and, and again, that's an area we had a workshop for the commission where uh, we haven't finalized yet, but the, the, the consensus among the commission was, hey, let's treat them as if they were a new business coming into Leesburg. We have, we have grant programs for existing businesses as it, as it is, but we probably need to, to help them out a little bit with, with some incentives because that's the mall success is key to Leesburg success. You know, that, that's a huge facility. They're, they're one of our, they probably are our biggest taxpayer um, they pay they pay about a quarter million dollars a year in taxes. Oh, wow. Um, you know, so if that went away, that would hurt everyone. So, we, you know, we need to look at work with them. How can we work as a, as a partner, not just as them being a, a, a kind of a tenant? You know, so. And, and I think even over the past, besides the Lake Square Mall, all the new businesses on Main Street, too. Yeah. The, you know, the, the, we, we have a, a lot coming in. We, we've had some developers come in that kind of have seen kind of what the city's doing and said, you know what, I want to invest my money here. I, w I want to, to open up new businesses. I want to revitalize these old um, buildings, which goes back to working with our staff and our staff being, you know, kind of flexible and, and open and knowing that, hey, this is not, um, I, I can't treat this as if it was a new building. I have to be flexible and allow them to, to, to do things that make sense in terms of renovating them because otherwise it's just going to stay a vacant building. 
Right, and, and, I, and I'm not sure if you feel comfortable speaking about this right now, but the fact of the matter is a lot of folks, business owners, don't know about the FSL grant. That is still taking place right it now. It is, yeah, the, 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 the facade sign and landscape grant. Um, that is a program that it, right now it applies to builders on our, um, businesses on our major corridors, which are Main Street, Highway 27, and 441, I believe. And that is a matching grant. It's a 100% match up to $25,000 for improvements to their facade, to their landscaping, or for new signage. So, you know, it, it's What a, a great it's a opportunity great for any local business mm -hmm. in those areas. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, so the, the idea is if, if they invest in their business, we're going to help them out and, and match it. That is so cool. And you're so cool. Thank you for coming on and yeah. sharing your story with us. I mean, in the sense of any viewer out there, um, especially maybe some of the high school students that might be, might be tuning in, I mean, any words of encouragement in the sense of to get our community more involved or connect even closer to our local government? Absolutely. I mean, you know, so coming to the meetings, while they can be boring, uh, you know, you don't have to come to all of them. Uh, we, we post the agenda generally the Wednesday or Thursday before the meetings. And you can go on leesburgflorida.gov, read the agenda. If there's something you're interested in, show up to the meeting. We allow public comment um, after each item. And then at the end, we allow public comment where you can speak about anything you want to speak about. Um, you can reach out to the commissioners. Um, and then uh, also you can get involved in the other organizations. You know, uh, I'm very involved with the Chamber of Commerce, the Leesburg Partnerships, great organization, Leesburg Center for the Arts. Um, I'm sure there's Arts. many, many more. But, you know, th there's an organization for everyone. And I would just, you know, get involved with the community. and. Uh, you know, you get a lot out of it. Great way to wrap this all up. And it, and I love the fact that you guys are down the Milton Moore's house too now, the chamber. That's are really you guys exciting. enjoying that? Uh, yeah, it, we love it down there. Um, it, it's been great. Um, you know, I think more people have, have seen that house in the last six months than probably the prior six years because people are constantly stopping by because it's, you know, they come to town, they go to the Chamber of Commerce, and then they get a tour of this house, which is just amazing. Uh, if you haven't been to the Milton Moore's house, uh, I would encourage uh, any viewers to go down, check it out uh, Monday through Friday. Um, I think it's uh, definitely like probably like nine to five that the chamber office is open and you can uh, can take a tour. It's free. You can, and you guys always do the beast feast, the fish fry, all those great community events, which are awesome to our area. Anything coming up special at the Milt Moore's house, the chamber? Um, I don't can't think of anything off the top of my head. Um, I know they're already talking Mardi Gras. I yeah, Mardi Gras <laughs> is the big thing coming up February. <laughs> Certainly, the the, 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 the Leesburg partnership puts on. It'll be downtown. Um, the parade, I believe, is February the 3rd. Exactly. So, um, you know, that's really exciting. The chamber, we're, we're looking at trying to do a, a Taste of Leesburg, which will be the, the first time we've ever done that, maybe maybe March. So stay well, tuned. Us, yeah, well, let us know because we do Taste of Lake, right. uh, the Taste of Lake restaurant series, which is a half hour. So okay. I think we should come out and make it into a nice half hour special. Oh, that would be great. And have the restaurants in town compete. Yeah. Mayor, thank you so much for coming in. We wish you the very, very best, and we look forward to your monthly updates. Thanks, Ron. We really hope you enjoyed this edition of Inside Leesburg. Of course, if you want more information about our great lakefront city, check out leesburgflorida.gov.